In the year 986, a Viking ship penetrated Arctic ice guarding the coast of an unknown land. The frigid waters teemed with life. A Viking colony was established at the very edge of the known world, in a country the settlers named Greenland. Three and a half centuries later, a ship from Europe put into the settlement. The sailors found the colony empty, abandoned, desolate. Why had the Viking settlers vanished? Bronze warrior marks the saga's beginning. A thousand years ago, Eric the Red led a fleet of Viking ships from this Icelandic harbor west into the unknown sea. It is a story that ends in mystery. History's tides have swept past man's fainter tracks, leaving only scattered patterns that seem to lead nowhere. Time has almost obliterated the adventures of one particular man. Eric the Red was an old-style Viking, earthy, wild, fiercely independent. Ten centuries ago, in Norway, Eric killed some king's men in a bloody fight. He fled to Iceland. He found the land already settled. Then, as now, its people were sheep farmers and fishermen. They had recently become Christians. And with the zeal of converts, built churches over the holy sites of their pagan days. The cults of the Old Norse faith were savagely suppressed, but Eric the Red continued to worship the Norse god Thor. July 1978. A small crowd gathers at a solitary farm in a rural district of western Iceland. They have come to witness secret rites banned since the days of Eric the Red. Sven Bjorn Beintansson has revived the old pagan faith. His followers call him All Share Your Goli, High Priest. We have old gods in our religion. Uh, our Vikings, the old Vikings, they, if they was going to sail somewhere, they asked the spirit, the sea god, and the battle god, the fight god, you know, and then we celebrate and we drink for your healthy. This, this is a Thor's hammer. Thor's hammer symbolized the old Norse faith. It represented a thunderbolt, a mystic sign venerated in Northern Europe since prehistoric times. Sven Bjorn Beintansson leads his followers into a mountain sanctuary far from the roads and towns of modern Iceland. Vikings worshipped the primal forces of nature. Chief deity was the sky god, ruler of storms, wielder of thunderbolts. After ten centuries of suppression, a horn of mead is once again offered to mighty Thor. On the plain near Thingvalir Falls, the past is celebrated. Modern Icelandic farmers assemble as their ancestors did in the summer of 982. Horses are judged today. A thousand summers ago, they judged men. Norse freemen gathered here to politic,
to settle disputes. Times were changing. Life was becoming more orderly, civilized. That spring, Eric's axe had swung in another bloody brawl. Eric the Red was outlawed. Eric fled. He sailed west, west into the unknown. From northern mists loomed a massive island, ice-bound, uninhabitable, but for a narrow strip of land on its southwest coast. Here, Eric's people settled, optimistically calling their new home Greenland. They homesteaded, building houses and barns, enclosing pastures and fields. But even in Greenland, Eric the Red did not find complete refuge. Eric's wife raised Greenland's first church. She barred Eric from their home until he agreed to give up pagan ways. But evidence suggests the old Viking's conversion was not complete. Greenland's fjords could not sustain the colony. Crops would not grow. The land's wealth was to be reaped only in its wilderness. Small groups of Norse hunters fanned out through a vast expanse. Arctic seas soon wrecked their long ships, but they pressed on in small open boats on voyages that must have lasted years. Rarely were European ships able to journey to distant Greenland. Years elapsed between visits, but a few Arctic treasures lured traders to venture west. One of those treasures was the Jeer Falcon. Sultans and caliphs offered coffers of gold for a live Greenland falcon. Arab court geographers told them this fierce and most valuable hunting bird came from world's end, from the fabled Ultima Thule, the land farthest north. Norse hunters pushed beyond the edge of the known world. Narwhal, the great horned whale of the high Arctic. In distant Europe, Medieval alchemists sold the whale tusk as unicorn's horn, ground into magical potions. A single narwhal could make a hunter rich for life if he survived the vast, uncharted wilderness and succeeded in making his way back to Greenland. Few returned. Fewer ships arrived from Europe. The Norse Greenlanders sank into ever deeper isolation and were lost to history, except for a single brief reference. In 1300, church annals noted that a Greenlander had been burned at the stake for secretly practicing the old faith. After that, there is only silence. In the summer of 1342, a ship put into the western settlement. It carried a bishop sent from Europe to investigate why the Greenlanders had fallen behind in their church tithes. The Norse farms were empty, abandoned. There was nothing else, no messages, no signs of life. The settlers had simply vanished. For the last 600 years, the fate of the Norse Greenlanders has remained one of history's most baffling puzzles. In 1921, archaeologists dug near Cape Farewell at Greenland's southern tip. They found a church graveyard and the huddled remains of hunchbacks, dwarves, sterile cripples. Was the mystery solved? Had the Norse colony died out from inbreeding and malnutrition, from severest cultural isolation? At the cemetery's edge, pointing west toward America, was a coffin, nearly seven feet long and empty. The withered end of Eric's people, or only the poor and weak left behind.
The search for the lost Vikings of Greenland leads us to the northern coasts of Canada. Here, even in summer, Arctic seas rage. Travelers peer anxiously into the distance, looking for the signs of safe harbor that mean Payne Bay. Payne Bay, swept by fierce tides, frigid, remote, yet teeming with life. The richest caribou lands in Canada's eastern Arctic. Bear, trout, char, seal, and whale. 